In most of the modern front-end frameworks, when our component have a very complex template, a good practice to organize it is to break it down into additional components. And SolidJS also works in this way. But how we can share a state between components? There are patterns, state managers, and SolidJS offer several interesting tools and APIs to handle this problem. In this video, we will create custom components, we'll analyze a couple of patterns to share the state between components, and we will refactor the application that was created in the first video about Solid. First, we create two components, and as you can see, they are two simple functions that we can use directly in the template of any other component. Now, let's create a simple state to manage a counter, and you can watch the previous video in case you don't know how this mechanism works. However, it's a good practice to have each component placed in a specific file, and then import them wherever we want. So, we can simply move the code we wrote in app.tsx in component1.tsx and component2.tsx and we need to import them in app.tsx in order to use them. In SolidJS, we can move the state out of the main component and easily share it with the children. In fact, we can now open the first component, import the state, use it in the template, and move the button to the second component as well. As you can see, both components import and share the same state, the first component reads the value, and the second can write it instead. In fact, everything seems to work fine. Another technique to share the state across components using the most modern front-end frameworks and library is to manage the state inside the parent component and passing it to its children via properties. The code will be much more expressive than before, and it will be much easier to understand at a glance how a view or a part application works. And also it's easy to understand what part of the state a component needs to work and what the component does. In fact, as you can see, we can simply define an attribute for our child component and pass the state. And we can do the same to pass a callback, I mean a function it needs to invoke when the button is clicked in order to update the state or, for example, invoke a REST service. A big advantage of this approach is that the component becomes totally stateless, I also call them presentational components, and they does nothing, just display values and invoke callbacks. In this way, in the future, we can completely change the architecture used in our parent components and our children doesn't need any update. They just need to receive data and callbacks. And as you can see, the result is the same and the two components can easily communicate. Now let's see how to refactor the application created in the previous video. Let's make a summary. We have a state that is populated where the component is mounted through a call to a REST API. The delete user function receives the ID of the user to delete. It invokes a REST API and updates the state by removing an element. The keydown handler function, on the other hand, is invoked when the user writes something in an input field and the end button is pressed. It invokes the REST service and adds the new user in the state. In this component, I would create at least two children components. The form, which in a real-world application probably it will contain many more fields and more complex validation logic, and the list of users. So we can create two files to contain the component and we can go ahead with our factoring. Let's start from the user list component and we move the part of the template inside it. This component will have to receive two properties, the state and the callback to update it when the user is deleted. Then, we update the component to receive these two properties. Data will be used to populate the four component and display the list. And the callback will be invoked on the click of the delete button. Of course, now we need to update the user list component template in order to use props data and props on delete. And it works. Now we can do the same with the form. We create the new form component and move all the form elements inside it. 
In this case, we only have one input and it's not really necessary the creation of a component. But in a real world application, we usually have dozens of form controls and complex layout. Split your templates in components and delegate part of the logic can be very useful to easily maintain your application and keep your code clean. In fact, I also prefer move all the logic that controls the form into the component itself from pressing the enter button to any validation. And my goal is that this component returns just the form data and nothing else. Now I can give a more understandable name to the onkeydown handler function and it will just receive form data instead of the keyboard event. And of course, we need to pass this function to our user form component. In this way, in the future, I can completely change the form logic by using other techniques or external libraries and my application will continue to work without need to be updated. Now I would like to move all the logic in a separate file. A very simple approach that we can apply and is very similar to what we do in React with custom hooks is to move the logic for managing the state and the side effects into a function that will return all the references to the state and to the functions to update it. Let's go back to the parent component. We can import the function and we can use the destructoring to get all the properties it returns. Another possible improvement would be to group all functions into an action object in order to explicitly separate them from the state. Okay, that's all for this video. Obviously, there are other techniques, patterns and API to manage the state of a solid JS application, but this approach is one of the most used in several frameworks and libraries such as Angular, React, Svelte and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm waiting for comments to know what you think. Bye.